It's another double episode day. It's another prospect profile. We are talking today to Joel Henderson of Puck Preps, all about Zach Benson. And uh, he is a really fun kid. That's today's episode of Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you new stories, uh, the good, the bad and the ugly, all about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms. We're also over on YouTube. We are super close to our next milestone. So if you feel like uh, hitting the subscribe button over there, it helps me out. It helps you out. Everybody wins. And uh, welcome to to the show. We're doing something uh, a little bit different today, or not that different, I guess. We're continuing our draft coverage uh, of the 2023 draft. And uh, today we're talking to Joel Henderson of Puck Preps. Uh, he's a uh, expert on the WHL in particular. So I thought, who better to talk to than uh, him about Zach Benson, who, if not for Connor Bedard, might be the best player to come out of the WHL this year season so uh, i will just get straight into my conversation with joel about zach benson so at this point the blue jackets are pretty much guaranteed a top three pick but stranger things can happen so i thought we would take a look at some guys over at the whl are not named connor that are tearing it up uh, i've got joel henderson of puck preps here and uh, today i thought we would chat a little bit about zach benson who uh, i just checked and has almost 100 points this season so i know that feels pretty good that in any other year i feel like that would be Incredible. And then you look at how many points Connor Bedard has, but I still feel like Zach Benson is a legit top five guy. So what can you tell me about him? Um, Zach Benson, as I referred to like throughout the last couple of years, is I just, I call it like, and every time you go see him, you go, you're going to see the hockey school of Zach Benson. Um, and what I mean by that is that the little habits, the little things that players can do well to, to just maximize their, their efforts as far as point totals and four check and supporting play and all of those sorts of things, Zach Benson does it about as well as anyone I've ever seen at the junior level. And so the reason that he's been able to, um, to gather as many points as he has is because those finer details of the game, he does all of them. And so, you know, and so when you think of a guy that's putting up as many points as he is, it's like, is, does he have the best shot on his team and is the power play sniper? No. Um, is he the long puck carrier, stretch carrier through the neutral zone? No. He's just the most efficient player that you can think about. The big story for the Blue Jackets, kind of the past couple of seasons, and I know that we've talked about this specifically in previous years when we've done these draft profiles, has been that the Blue Jackets need a number one center. They don't. They have a bunch of guys that could be very good second-line centers. Zach Benson is probably not that top-line center for the Blue Jackets. But is he someone that you think could fit in on this team? I see. This is the beautiful part about this guy is he can fit in on any team. So it's it's one of those where like you put him in a different situation on a different team on a different line with different teammates and he's making those line mates better. That's his gift. That's his benefit. And so, like I said, I've never really seen anyone to do that before. Like, you know, in the NHL, I think we've talked about like very efficient middle six players, guys that come into lineups and, and you, you know, um, there was a number of guys throughout the years. Like I, the one guy that comes to my mind right away is a guy like Michael Froelich or Michael Froelich was never, you know, the, the biggest, the best, the strong, the, whatever it was, but Michael Froelich had a, he had a knack of making his line mates better. And so when you put him on that third or that second line, he just did that. And so Zach Benson is that, but, but has more skill. And so, He's one of those players that no matter where you put him, he's going to be okay. If you put him at center, he's going to be okay. He'll figure it out. He has this. He has the foot speed, the strength, the positioning, all of those kinds of things. He's probably most efficient uh, as a winger, as a play continual winger. Um, I think his gifting is probably that he is the ideal number three on a line. 
as in like if you have your natural long-standing playmaker you have your um, goal scorer you have your efficient goal scorer zach is the perfect player that you're looking to play with them right because the thing that the blue jackets are looking for is they need someone to play with line a and Gaudreau. You know, so they are looking for, not necessarily, you know, and I've talked to a bunch of these prospect guys and we've talked about, you know, Connor Bedard on the Blue Jackets obviously is is the goal this season. But then you talk about, you know, Adam Fantilli between those two guys. You talk about, um, not necessarily between those guys, but a guy like Matvey Michkov who has potential to be a star of his own. But the Blue Jackets could very well succeed with a guy like Zach Benson as the third guy on that line. It's it's one where like when I picture that like it's not it's not an ideal situation. You would hope for something a little bit differently, but like I said, Zach is one of those guys that just makes an, anything work. So it's um, you know like he's th that's the thing is he's not necessarily lacking in anything. He just doesn't have like he just doesn't have the premier shot, the natural. You know he doesn't have the length. He doesn't have the whatever. He's just. He's just the smartest player on the ice every time he steps on the ice. And um, and so, like, with the Blue Jackets, like you said, they've got a lot of guys that – the one thing about the Blue Jackets that I think is interesting is that they've got a lot of guys that are very, very unique. And so when you're talking about a centerman, when you're talking about trying to find somebody to put them together, what you're looking for generally throughout the lineup is guys that can help glue these guys together. And Zach is one of those guys. And so he's, he had just has that natural gifting. And I think at the next level, you know, um, I don't know that we'll see it because I don't think he's a guy that bounces around organizations. I think he's a guy you hold on to, but, um, but if he does, you know, we'll get to see the fact that he can, he can play with anyone. In a minute, I've got more of my conversation with Joel about Zach, but first I've got to tell you all about FanDuel because the playoffs are ramping up for the NHL, same with the NBA, and it's the perfect time, perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers are going to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Uh, what that means is that you put your money in. If you don't win on your first bet, then you will get that money back in bonus bets if you don't win all you have to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app it's safe it's secure it's super easy to use you can bet everything from the money line to point scorers to I don't know how many goals Johnny Gaudreau is going to score the, tonight or tomorrow night plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay so if you want to put money on the Blue Jackets winning tomorrow against the Kings and Johnny Gaudreau scoring a goal you can combine them and get more money than you would if you bet on them separately so don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the NBA and also us the locked on podcast network yeah, for sure. It's like the glue guy comment is really interesting because to me, a glue guy is not someone that you'd necessarily draft kind of fourth or fifth overall. But I guess there's, you know, there are, uh, there must be players out there. I can't think of any right now that are those guys that have gone high up in, high in the draft and are not star players. And yet, like Michael Frohley is, is what you said, but, but better, you know, they make guys around them better. Um, so if the you know the Blue Jackets drop out of the top three, and I feel like the top three at this point is it's going to be Bedard, Fantilli, probably Carlson, um, because they're all centers, and the pe people in the NHL love to draft centers. Yeah. Fourth and fifth overall is that kind of where you see Zach Benson falling? Do you think he'll drop a little bit because you know he's not necessarily a center? He's kind of on the smaller side. Like where do you see him? Drop. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I think anywhere probably from that five to like, I mean, I could see him dropping. And the only reason is because of his, um, is because of his size. That's, that's the only reason. And, right. and it, but once again, like when I talk about the ways that someone can counter the fact that they're a little smaller, Zach does all of those things. And so it's like, he closes gaps. He makes sure that he's in great positioning. He doesn't let himself get like, you know, it's very rare that he takes a big hit. He actually, like, as ironic as that is, he just took one and, like, you know, hurt himself. Uh, hurt himself, but someone hurt him. Um, and But the reality is, is it's so rare that, you know, those situations come up either. It's just, 
it's just constant pressure and forecheck and good positioning and and great hand-eye coordination and continuing plays and making sure that you're in the right position with the right guys supporting it's just everything those things he does so um so but there will be teams i mean there probably will be teams that will look at him and kind of think well like maybe he will maybe he'll he's maybe he's kind of topped out you know what i mean like maybe he's hit the end of his development runway and so this is what we're getting but maybe there's a couple other guys you know what i mean like there's always those discussions but um but i think the one thing that um that zach has answered the question for me is uh is uh, i saw him live a couple of weeks ago and um he he was quicker like he was more strong like the thing that the thing that i had to look at him for was just like can he build more muscle and more strength and from the start of the year he has and so like he's going to continue to do that and continue his ex, you know how being explosive and all those things so uh he's not a guy that i'm worried about and i think once you kind of get into that range like he's just a guy you're thrilled to take um if he drops like shame on people so he feels like a guy like. that is prime to drop to maybe like eighth or ninth and then in three years time we're all like how, how did this guy drop that far you know yeah. um but i want to talk a little bit about kind of his you talked about his development and we've we've talked in the past about do you would you rather draft a project that you think has a high ceiling or would you rather draft a sure thing do you think zach benson probably not going to be in the nhl next season i feel like he's he's definitely a guy that maybe has to do a little bit more work but also that's what we thought about cole Sillinger, you know um what if he does he go back to the whl next season and if he does what kind of other big things that you think he needs to work on i know you've said he's kind of an all-round guy but is there anything that thing that you think is what what is the what are the blue jackets gonna for example what are the blue jackets going to look at him and say hey go back work on this work on that you know um the whole work on this work on that like the the only real thing is just becoming more uh is working on particularly like the strength of his shot Mm. um and some of those things maybe giving himself a few more options offensively um because he does get himself into those spaces and he does finish a good number of those shots but like i said he's not you know his shot will be probably an average shot at the nhl level like he isn't a guy that you naturally will will tee up for one timers on on the sides you know especially playing in winnipeg and having the amount of talent that they've had there you, you know even guys like you know teeing up one timers for connor mclennan or having uh matthew savoy you know go on a curl and drag or even like they you know they ran their power play and had the shooter for connor geeky for quite a while you know and they've got they've added a bunch more guys too so he's never really been those roles he's just always been like where do you want me coach here great and then he plays it as well as anyone and um so i think maybe those natural things but it, it to me it's just all about the more strength he adds the better he'll be and so every year that he adds more strength the better he'll be and so if you want to send him back which you probably should but the reality is is i just think he's so good that it's just like he could like you want to put him on a third line in the nhl i guarantee you you're gonna love it like it's it's um you know, one of the comparables, I guess, being someone who every now and then catches Flames games is like, is walk, watching Jacob Pelche. Um, and Jacob Pelche is one of those guys that makes line mates better. He's smart, he's skilled, um, he's really quick on his edges. And, uh, you know, he quickly went from a player that, that you know, coach was like, I don't know if he can fit this lineup. I don't know if he's old enough, strong enough, mature enough. And then, you know, a few, day, a few games down the line, he just said, everywhere we put him, he's been good. <laughs> So like, and so I just see like that kind of stuff with Zach. And I think, um, you know, Zach's one of those guys that every team should dream about having their star player play with Zach. In a minute, I've got the tail end of my conversation with Joel all about Zach Benson. That's what's coming up next on Locked on Blue Jackets. Yeah, for sure. He has, uh, like I said earlier, he's got 98 points, I believe. Uh, over 60 of those are assists. I feel like the Blue Jackets proportionally have, and this is going to sound weird because they only have two 20 goal scorers this season, but I feel like they have a lot of guys that can shoot the puck and not a lot of guys that can set them up. So maybe if they do drop out of that top three, a playmaker who can play center, who can play wing, who can you know move up and down the lineup, yeah. could be what the Blue Jackets need. Well, and I think over the years too, I mean, um, you know, think of a lot of the elite teams and a lot of those specialty guys, like, 
you know, when you're thinking of a Crosby or, you know, last number of years, someone like Barkov and McDavid, you're looking for the guys to be their efficient wingers. And some of those teams have found the, the best gems of players because they're just good, efficient, smart, you know, like the Brian Rusts and the, the Jake Gensels and the, you know what I mean? Like these are players that you just dream about filling in your lineup because they find a way to, to absolutely complement guys that are your best shooter or your best centerman or your best playmaker through the middle. And I just think Zach Benson is the best of those worlds. So, you know, with, with Columbus, if they're really looking for stability down the middle and they're looking for that, um, it's not, you know, I, I don't know that Zach will be the high on their, their, um, you know, their list, but I just, I just think whoever takes Zach is just going to be smiling because they know what they're getting. And so, you know, if you're looking to fill a specific need and you're going, this is what we have to have, then that's fine. But if you think Zach is the best player and you take him, you're going to be thrilled. That's just, that's just how I feel. It's like, he might not be the, you know, at the end of the day too, like when we talk about some of these guys, like, and generally with smaller players, um, you know, teams will kind of shoo them away. And the reason that they'll drop is because they're like, yeah, but like they aren't guys that, you know, they're guys that might be good players, but they're not guys that you win with. And Zach Benson is a guy you win with. So. Yeah, for sure. He is a guy that, again, I don't know that he's going to be a blue jacket. I don't know that the draft is going to fall that way. And, you know, I don't know that he's a guy that is necessarily super high on their list, kind of from the the rumblings that I've heard. But I am going to be interested to see where he does go and how he is utilized by that player. Because it feels like a Montreal could really use a guy like Benson, I feel like San Jose is a guy that could really use uh, a guy like Benson. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see where he does end up. Um, and that's all I've got for you today. Uh, tomorrow we will be talking all about the LA Kings. Uh, we will be looking at the game that's happening tomorrow night. I'm sure that'll be exciting. Hopefully a little bit less stupid than last night's game against the San Jose Sharks. And uh, I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find the podcast at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticism, you can email me at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. And uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on. <laughs>